So I thought my topic was to catch them young, and we'll uh, move to that with... You know, this is, I'm sure you're, you, each one of you can relate to going and doing something different, right? So this is something which we are, so I'm going to try and over the next quick, short time, try and convince you why I feel we need to catch them young and learning so that you all learn from my own experience. The importance of collaboration in research, how to ignite all these young minds to think beyond. We've heard some amazing talks, including Dr. Paul's how to create an ecosystem in medical colleges, and my efforts at catching them young still continue. So this is a journey of, look at that, how many years, from 78, then a medical school, and then on to this, almost 40 years, too long for this generation. So and this, what was this journey? It was just education and patient care. What was research as an undergrad? A student t-test for a short note, you wrote that, or cutting chai pe chai kai square test. And beyond that, nothing more. From that, the journey was to go take this forward, to have education, research, patient, and trying to, you know, move on to a different strata. But it took me too long, or near 40 years. Do you want to wait that long? The hair grows all gray, yeah. we should start it earlier. So what is actually the problem? You know, what is happening is we are after degrees. Information, knowledge, knowledge, information, MBBS, NEET, MD, whether it's other life sciences, it's the same story. So we just keep repeating. We stop to ask questions. Yesterday, I was very happy when in that session, they said, we've stopped, so let's start asking questions. And by the time we reach wisdom, we really have the gray hair. So but where was in my journey, let me tell you, it, it, did, it wasn't wasted. The question is, I'm going to share some of the incidents. My first exposure was, I was in Jhansi. We had a diarrhea outbreak. I was a young pediatrician. This is late 80s and early 90s. OR, or rice-based and or low osmolar was still being talked of. And out of common sense, because grandmother used to give rice water. At home, it was a practice that you gave rice boiled nivar manaja, pez, was given. So at home, as a young pediatrician, I powdered rice, made a whole lot of rice, put a big pot on, boiled it, and started giving a simple case sheet of assessment, teaching my nurses. Mothers weren't happy to give it with a spoon. So I, those days, we had IV glass bottles. So I used a small feeding tube, put it as a nasogastric, and put that rice-based ORS with little pot chlorine syrup into it. And can you imagine, out of 250 children treated, only eight needed IV in that whole episode. Presented that paper at the Asian Congress, and I said, wow, this is something I can do different. Emboldened with that, there was no NICU in the small military hospital. So I said, why babies below one kg were left to die? So this was when I decided that simple, like, OK, Dr. Bang did it at a huge scale. But everyone can make a difference if you're alert to the problems. What was it required? Warmth, asepsis, which could be given even in a corridor. So what did I do? Use mothers as monitors. Put mothers on rotation of all the low birth weight babies, kept them separate, kept them warm, and used a temple bell, the one we use for puja, so that the mother could ring and I could run in. And the first year, we saved babies, eight babies, and that time massage therapy was not on. Today we are writing a meta-analysis and a thing on use of massage for babies, and we are soon going to be presenting that. So we using this, we found that eight babies in the first year below one kg survived. And the direct result was this little pinky which came all over the papers, and this is same pinky now appearing for her IAS exam. She was just 650 grams. And I said, wow. I can do it. It was no big, no rocket science, no big research. But it was a big satisfaction from small solutions. It went on. When I took into pediatric nephrology at Ames, I had a mentor, Dr. Aran Srivastava. He said, no one is working in bladder. So I went abroad, trained, did everything. I said, oh my god, my patients don't, cannot go to, for urodynamic studies. Can I look at more non-invasive, simple? Today, it's become algorithms. It's there in textbooks. We've published it. We're using it regularly. 
So it was again very simple, done statistically, done correctly, and that thesis of my postgraduate MD student got best thesis in the country. Again, when we went on to dialysis, thought why, how can we do dialysis, making it cheaper at home? And this was using the standard pressure cooker for asepsis, changing the method by which a big bag could be used, changing prescriptions out of common sense, finding economical solutions, and doing research because our L1, this thing we required to have a particular brand. But showing the months saved and patients improving could change the prescription and we could get the correct fluids. And in that, we presented our first case. And I, that's where I started learning the word AFAS. If I'm doing research, is it affordable? Is it feasible? Is it acceptable? Is it sustainable? And they were mothers doing home-based dialysis, letting children go to school. They were just seventh and eighth standard pass. So this was, again, success. But realized one couldn't go further than that. If I needed to make big publications, there had to be collaboration. That was the first time one learned that if I have to do any bigger than small, small things, I have to collaborate. So the lesson for everyone, let's collaborate early. And with that, this went on. And when one became senior, there were more students, young faculty. This is for the senior faculty. Today, we've published by just getting six neonatologists from the army together, we have Indian nomograms for neonatal jaundice, which is such a simple thing. So I think this is important, that we need to collaborate. And the same thing goes on. We went on to develop our own DBT-funded labs for looking at cardiovascular outcomes in nephrotic syndrome, and then it went on. So this was, I think, important. So why research, research at all? I mean, if things are so simple, there's the whole theme of this conference. So for that, I thought I should tell you what is in store for you. That was history, past. That's why I was trying to tell our chairperson, let's get on to history, let's get to the present. Knowledge is doubling so fast. Can you wait for 30, 40 years? No, yesterday a student asked, what is the incentive? You have to find solutions faster. So you need to know them faster. So therefore, today with Internet of uh, Things and all, you're doubling knowledge every 12 hours. So you can't, uh, unless you're keeping on alert, keeping on finding solutions, you will not be able to find. The next problem is, uh, look at the Nature Collaboration Index. When I'm talking of that you need partnership, why the lesson learned to be earlier? The top listings in India are all isolated scientific institutions and labs. Where are our universities? Look at the top 10 in, at Global. They're all universities which have the hospitals, which have medical schools, working as collaboration, working with all other institutions. It's time we all learn to collaborate and work together. So necessity is the mother of research. Like this guy, he could simple by putting those sticks, he could separate all those. So this has now become a necessity. I think that answers the question, why catch you young? And for you to survive, it is not important to find, just give you solutions. You have to learn to find the solutions. So how do you find the solutions? And this was a challenge that I faced when I started taking on leadership roles. And this is what, for every medical school, college teacher, we have to see how to create an ecosystem for research, how to create an environment for curiosity, and how to get students to go beyond exams. So therefore, to ignite young minds, I have this simple algorithm. Are you sensitive to a problem? Look around. Look at your patients. See them. Go out to the villages. Dr. Vidya said that we have so much data. Get immersed in that. You'll see the problems. If you don't keep your eyes open, you're not going to see them. Are they able to work to, are you able to work to find some solution? Do you, is your solution going to be a fast? Can you do it alone? And what are the changes that need to be brought collectively together? So I think this is the basic. And I think integrated teaching, this was, a, so to make people aware, we started integrating and that came in as CBME when I went into the, as a member of the M, erstwhile MCI. So we started bringing out all these things to make you people more aware. Today, CBME and early clinical exposure 
gives you this right from the beginning. And symbiosis is well poised. Integration of, I went to an uni international university, STEM classes and labs were all in one building. Can we have health school, not just engineering, but what about your biotechnology, bioscience? They should be sharing classes, sharing spaces. That is how we will find solutions. So with the same thing, we developed a multidisciplinary research unit. So this is something which can happen at every list. So I'm just sharing my journey. And what was the net? By putting a 3D printing lab there, one of the undergraduates was the first one who had a patent within a year because he created this spec size. He just found that micro aspirations, can I find a solution? And now the cadet, Advay Audekar, he's doing internship, but he already has a startup. Again, collaboration, trying to find solutions from interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary. We are looking at yoga nidra and its effect. The thing is being alert. Now, because over these years I trained myself, even when we went on high altitude, a chance observation looking at data, that reinduction people had more ape, and we started epigenetic studies on that. Looking, just simple looking at the data of bullet injuries in Kashmir and analyzing it found that those who had chest injuries because of the structure of the jacket, they died earlier and most of them due to pneumothorax. Just teaching MOs and reinforcing, putting an intrathoracic drain changed the whole picture. So it is being alert and al alive to your environment, so you need to be trained from the beginning. So therefore, the, today, the question is that the medical profession has started dealing. We have to research this problem. So we have to see what all we can solve. And we have to develop a vision. And that is where everyone talked of passion. Because then it drives you. You don't need to find a solution. And we need to align education, research, and public health. We are in silos. Medical education is in medical colleges. Research is happening in our labs and sci by scientists. And public health is for government to do. We, don't, we cannot. We have to now align, and that is how we will find solutions. So therefore, if we look back at what we saw, NHFS data, look what has happened. What are the top ischemic heart disease, COPD? Look at diabetes. It has jumped from 35 to 13, and this is 2016. More 10 years have passed. Almost 10 years will pass after that. So we are going up faster. So the metabolic, this thing, there's a huge scope for that. So let's look at things with our eyes open and look at the risk factors. High blood pressure, high fasting blood, such simple. So let's find innovative ways, finding artificial intelligence, finding digital technology. Let's find new methods to pick them up and sustain. It's OK to do a project, but let's find sustainable solutions. And this continues. Why I showed you right at the beginning, that's the summer internship program. I call it SIP, because my it's for me a structured investment plan for the future. It is for you the, for the future, that if we can excite you early, if we can get you to go and spend, in the first year itself, we had 140 in 22 institutions. Today, the number of institutions have increased. This year, it will be much more. Just spending two year, weeks out of your comfort zone, spending it talking to others will ignite you. I'll just show you some of these other Maligao magic. There's a huge project going on in Nagpur. I'll go through each of these. So this was a <coughs> project which came out simple from the collector telling me that Maligao people are not wearing masks, people are not taking vaccines, but they're not getting infected. So we said, okay, let's look at the magic. What is important is not that we did a zero survey. We did it in 10 days, collecting near 3,000 samples, involving 180 students, five colleges across Pathis, using ASHA workers, and the whole thing coordinated by the block development CMO. So this was a way which we went ahead. First paper published, we've done series, We've looked at the differences. We are now looking at the cell-mediated. So this is starting from a simple question. And the result is we've already seen that when we modeled it with our Sutra model, we found that the third wave, as compared to the rest of the country, was as high, is low, and this corroborates beautifully with the antibody levels, which have not dropped down. First zero survey, pre-Omicron, it was 96%. 
So this is something which showed us. Another project involving students, taking research out of the classrooms, teaching on the ground. This is Blossom is a screening project for 18 villages of Gadchiroli, Nandurbar, the uh, areas around Nagpur, where 85% are Adivasis, health is less. We have 200, 300 students, 22 teams. Within two months, 10,000 people will screen. Blossom is the acronym for breast cancer because we identified from the local colleges what are the problems. Breast cancer, liver disease, osteoporosis, oral cancers, sexually transmitted disease, sickle cell anemia, and malnutrition. All ages covered, all but targeted. The same way we are moving on to having with all the laboratories so that students get exposed to them. We are also having immersive technology coming into education with uh, Microsoft. And this is the newest, that is our postgraduate institute. In three months, along with the civil hospital, MUHS has started so that we can get going with an MD-PhD program. The final is the last thing, which was a gap in mental well-being. Again, identified because there was nothing nothing for mental wellness. Even the national program talks of it, but the one which was rolled out is for how to reach for therapy. So what we've done is found a solution under the office of the principal scientific advisor, since I serve on the committee, got together Nimans, AFMC, CDAC Bangalore. Created, the app is ready, and it will be launched on 11th November for all the colleges as a test thing in Maharashtra. So therefore, how to increase the pool of good researchers? I think we need to strengthen UG research through STS, university, alumni, improve the quality of PG research. The thesis should not be a cookbook. Research methodology workshop a must. Faculty should encourage, faculty should take on. There can't be theoretical lectures on research. They need to be role models from the faculty. Clinician researchers, the need of the day, Concept of protected research time for faculty undertaking research is a thought that we need to undertake at all colleges and universities and, of course, the MD program. So in the end, I think all that when we're researching, what I thought was what research requires is a map for people who are lost, and the map is a mentor, an attitude which is positive, never say die, give up, and a passion. And that is when the teacher and the taught will move together just like our Sanskrit shlok, Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu. So therefore, we've talked enough of fetal onset of adult disease. We should now talk of early intervention for better research. When? Catch them as early as UG. Create an ecosystem with role models in colleges and universities. Train them well with rigorous methodology, funding. And why was the question? I think for your survival, survival of the individual, the institution, the society, and the nation. Thank you so much, and Jai Hind. <laughs>